let's for a second see if we can really blow our minds with this entire concept of financial freedom. How many people do you hear saying, I want financial freedom. I want to get to financial freedom. My whole goal is financial freedom. Cool. But what does that actually mean? And the reason this matters is because it is going to change or dictate potentially how you actually achieve that. So we're going to kind of dive into this concept of financial freedom for a minute. Maybe you've heard things like this before. I don't know who's saying what about financial freedom, but here's my take on a lot of it. Fine. And this actually is not my uh, creation. Someone said this to me recently and it was mind blowing. Um, so I don't take credit for this concept, but if you really think about it, financial freedom, what people really mean when they say they want financial freedom is what? Time freedom. Hello. Because if you have financial freedom, meaning you don't have to work for your money, what is that actually getting you? You don't have to work. Cool. If you don't have to work, what do you get? Time freedom. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want, from wherever you want. That's huge freedom. So the reason I think this is important is because we are so caught up using this term financial freedom that we are focused on the money train and we're not really thinking about what it is we're actually trying to achieve. We just think we're trying to achieve financial freedom. Cool, nothing wrong with financial freedom, but what is it actually getting us? Why this matters is in understanding how to get financial freedom. So the biggest thing that you have to have, well, if not the only thing you have to have for financial freedom is passive income. You have to be able to make money without showing up and doing work. And that's not to say you never work for your passive income. That's a huge misunderstanding about passive income is that you have to do zero for it. In some cases, maybe you don't have to do anything for it, but you know, you may have to occasionally check in on things or whatever. Like if you can go travel for a month and there's no break in your income, you've got a certain level of passive income going that people call it making money in your sleep. So the money keeps coming in, even if you don't tend to it every single day. Whereas if you go to a job, if you don't show up for your job or do your job, the money's going to stop. So in order to have financial freedom, you have to have passive income. And here's where people get really hitched up on this for some reason. I don't know why I'm in real estate investing. So people say, oh, well, I want financial freedom. So I'm going to start wholesaling. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, wholesaling for the record is not an investment strategy, although it's pitched as one, but wholesaling essentially is a job. It is, in my opinion, a hundred percent active income, meaning you have to do the work and you have to do the job in order to get the income. The only exception to this is if somewhere down the line, you get enough systems and processes going and employees where you end up running a wholesaling business, then it can become more passive because you're not the one actually having to go do that work every day in order to get that income. So there is a level of passivity that is possible down the road. And that's true for anything you do, flipping houses, wholesaling, landlording, whatever you do, you can get to a place where you do make it passive, but let's assume we're all starting at the beginning. Wholesaling is a hundred percent active strategy as compared to, let's say syndications or notes, for example, that are 0% active. They're a hundred percent passive. You literally, other than putting your money into it, do nothing towards this. So somebody wants financial freedom and they're like, I'm going to get that by wholesaling. No, you're not because that's active income. If you have, if you're earning active income, which means you're working, you aren't going to get financial freedom. I mean, you could get super loaded and rich, but if your income is dependent on you showing up, then that blows all of the concepts of financial freedom out of the water. You don't have time freedom. You can't do it necessarily from wherever you want. And so no, that's not going to work. Okay, so you're getting into real estate investing and you want to get financial freedom. We know now that you have to get passive income. What does that look like? 
Well, just for the record on rental properties, you can have very hands-on rental property investments where you are very active in it, or you can have more hands-off rental properties like I do with turnkey rental properties. I have property managers who manage the properties. As far as you can be hands-off on a rental property, that's how hands-off I am. So there's that whole spectrum. So if you want financial freedom, let's say you get 50 rental properties that are managed by somebody else. Cool, you might, you're on track and or you're there because you are, you can go travel for a month and not have to worry about anything. At most, you might have to answer some phone calls or make a couple of decisions from afar. But if you're landlording those rental properties, you don't necessarily have all those freedoms because you may have to show up and fix a toilet. So just make sure you understand that distinction of what is really passive and what's really active. But if you want financial freedom, active income and active strategies aren't gonna get you there. Maybe down the line, after all of that work, kind of as like being retired, you do all that work and so now you're so rich that you can retire. We're really talking about retirement here. What is retirement? Financial freedom, meaning you don't have to work for your income or work to you know, pay for your, the cost of your life. So financial freedom equals retirement, which equals time freedom. Because people, retired people all the time buy an RV and just go travel all they want because they have all the time in the world. It's the whole idea of it. So how can you get to financial freedom, which means you have time freedom and location freedom, schedule freedom, whatever level of freedom you're looking for. It's what financial freedom gets you that you have got to be thinking about. How do you get there? Passive income. Any passive income investment that you can do is going to contribute towards financial freedom because financial freedom, let's say that my cost of living is $5,000 a month. Well, in order to be financially free, I need to have $5,000 or more in passive income per month to cover my cost of living. If I meet that threshold, I'm financially free. That's not bringing into conversations like nest eggs and savings accounts, you know, don't just meet your threshold and then be done with it. You know, make sure you have some safeties in there because passive income isn't always guaranteed. So you either want to have significantly more than you need or a nest egg or some backups, whatever, plan accordingly. But think about that when you're thinking about financial freedom and use that to help you decide how you want to get there. Again, I can't tell you how many times people are like, I want financial freedom. So I want to flip houses or wholesale or maybe, but it's not going to be passive, at least not in the beginning. And if that's the case, let's say you really do want to flip houses, but you also want financial freedom. Does that mean you can't, those two don't go together? No, but you need to take that into account in your planning. Okay. I really want to flip houses and I'm really good at it, but I do want financial freedom at some point. Okay. How am I going to get there? So we'll use that as an example. I start flipping houses. I'm super active in it. At some point, like I said earlier, you have to start outsourcing. You have to start getting people to do that work that brings in the income. Obviously, you're going to have to pay those people, but you eventually create systems and essentially a business out of it. So then you become a business owner. That way you're working on your business, not in your business. And that is what can create passive income. So I don't know if that's good news or bad news about financial freedom, but in terms of like how difficult it may be to get there, but think about financial freedom for really what it is, because that for some reason seems to be the part that most people miss.